The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "Hello there, and welcome to Four Center presents Data Bank Dive." I'm Ken Napsok. And I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and Data Bank Dive is exactly what it says on the tin. We dive into the StarWars.com data bank and the Wikipedia to talk about a real specific thing in Star Wars. A character, a place, a weapon, a vehicle. And we discuss how weird it is, how wild it is, how wondrous it is, just how great it is. Uh, we did a whole season of this show on the great sci-fi app, The Companion. So if you want to check that out, you can check out The Companion. We loved it so much that we've been doing it for a while now here out in the public in front of everyone. Mm-hmm. We're up to episode 24 and we can't wait until we get to episode 42 and beyond. And beyond the ultimate answer. Yes, this is a storefront show. You can see it from the street here now. Uh, we absolutely <laughs> love it. So, uh, yeah, we pick something. Uh, we dive on in, uh, celebrate, like you said, and with Bad Batch Season 2 approaching and approaching fast. Joseph, today, let's spend some time in Sid's parlor. Oh, I really want to. I want it to be real, and I want to be there right now. Essentially, you might say it is real. Let's dive into some of these details here. <laughs> As always, first we go to the Star Wars.com data bank to say what they have to say, uh, see what they have to say about Sid's parlor. And sometimes, we have, we have, as we've discovered, you go to the data bank and there's nothing there. I was very overjoyed, very, very, very overjoyed to find that they do have an entry. Sid's parlor. Amid the refuse, specked, and graffitied streets of Ord Mantel, Sid operates a dank underground parlor. <laughs> Patrons mingle at gaming tables while Sid tins, uh, tends bar, turning away newcomers who look like trouble or don't seem to have the credits to spend. That is a great <laughs> entry. A lot of story in there, yeah? I can smell that databank entry. Dank underground parlor. Man, I, I can smell just the moisture and the feet in <laughs> Sid's parlor. Yeah, when you hear the word dank, you think of The Simpsons. Dank, dank, dank. Uh, so, yeah, that's a lot going on there, but that's not all. I want to go into Wikipedia before we go any further because uh, I was, again, overjoyed, thrilled even, to discover that there's even more on Wikipedia. Located in a grimy, garbage-strewn alleyway in Ord Mantell City, Sid's Parlor was largely below street level, accessible by a staircase entrance with a sign bearing the name Sid's in Arbesh and a picture of a pair of dice. Hmm, that sounds familiar. More on that in a mm-hmm. bit. The parlor served a wide variety of alcohol, including Wyron's Reserve, Deep Core, Oda Gota, Moften, <laughs> or Mooften, Wicked Womp Rat, Dark Blue Milk, Thermal Detonator, and Reactor Coolant. The drinks were displayed <laughs> on shelves behind the bar. Uh, we're going to dive in. We're going to describe Sid's parlor, but uh, Joseph, Wicked Womp Rat, what do you think about all those drinks? I love when there are just a clarity of drinks in Star Wars. Uh, you know, I know that there's some resource somewhere on Wikipedia I can find that's just a list of all of them. But I love the ones that have uh, appeared at uh, actual Galaxy's Edge. It's been a pleasure to drink actual jet juice. Uh, mm. I was so curious about this, and, and I discovered that it is exactly what I thought it is. Uh, that entire list comes to us from beautiful nerds super zooming in and translating Orabesh on the drinks <laughs> in the background. Uh, I think some of them are maybe established in other canon places, but a lot of it, if you go on Wikipedia and click the links to these individual drinks, it's just, we zoomed in and we translated the not real language Orabesh, and it is so great. Oh, I love that. I love that. Oh, those beautiful nerds, indeed. We count ourselves in that group, but I just don't do the zooming. I never learned to speak Klingon, and I've relied on other people to translate Arabesh for me there. Um, all right. How, how would, we've, got some, we've got some very descriptive words in these two entries here, but how would we describe Sid's parlor? Yeah, I feel like what what Sid's parlor is, is maybe adding to the wide and wonderful history of bars and dives and parlors and cantinas and all that in Star Wars is that that gambling vibe, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You even got dice on the sign. So I, if I was just trying to describe the spirit of Sid's parlor, if I was trying to give it a, a catchphrase that that Sid could use to advertise. 
I'd maybe call it all the glamour of Canto Bite in a basement. <laughs> all of it. All of it. <laughs> it reminds me of the places, the little pockets you'll find where where gambling is legal, uh, but it isn't a big casino. It isn't Vegas. It isn't a big uh, mm-hmm. resort. Um, but it's just like, <laughs> here's yeah. what would normally just be a small town dive bar with a pool table. And because it's legal, seven slot machines just shoved into the corner. It's yeah. all of the gambling, a uh, thrill mm-hmm. and danger uh, with none of the glamour or free drinks. Yeah, you are describing a place I, I, I've certainly mentioned on Force Center before, definitely in other parts of, of my life, uh, called the Double Down Saloon in Las Vegas. It is <laughs> to a T, uh, to a T, because I would describe Sid Par- Sid's Parlor a little bit like, hey, a home away from home. It's the bar around the corner from your uh, apartment or your house or your work, and it's the place uh, you, you go and you have friends and regulars. That's just such a clean version <laughs> of what we actually have going on there and what's presented. Uh, and I, I, I mentioned this double down saloon before. Like I, if you're in Vegas, I do not recommend going there for fun and giggles, <laughs> go with a group <laughs> and make sure someone in that group can win a fist fight. It's, it's an experience. And the way they're describing Sid uh, and the Sid's bar here is how I would describe double down saloon in real life. So yeah, it's interesting. And, and, and it's perfect for star Wars. It's, it adds to the list, the, the this pantheon of, of great star Wars bars and parlors. And, and here we have it here with Sid. So yeah. It. Yeah. It reminds me of some of the bars in mid in the Midwest that are mm-hmm. definitely, they're definitely a place where, Hey, you can meet your friends. It's, it's, cozy it's warm it's away from the troubles of life but at the same time everybody in there is kind of having a hard time and the meat raffle might actually be a cover for gambling yeah they don't want you there they don't want your (laughs) cheery midtown energy no no they don't they don't want that hello fellows how's it going this ain't that kind of bar (laughs) i think you meant to go to the tropicana yes um so uh, here's a, here's one of the big details. What do we think about Sid's parlor being on Ord Mantel? And follow up question: Do we think Han Solo spent some time here? I, I I love that. That we always talk about tip of the iceberg storytelling in in Star Wars. That was one of the big ones when you grew up with the original trilogy, or or just encountered the original trilogy at any age of the the bounty hunter that Han ran into, and all the rebels on Ord Mantel and. If you dive into that and you there's a bunch of different competing uh, mm-hmm. stories back in Legends of EU continuity trying to tell that story of the bounty hunter they ran into on Ord Mantell. So that uh, that legend always lives large in my mind when it comes to Ord Mantell. Here, here's my take. Uh, I think it's possible that Sid knows Han very well, that Han legitimately had a, um, a bad business deal with Sid and mm-hmm. Sid had every right to understandably tip that bounty hunter off to Han's <laughs> present on Ord Mantel. I, it, that's my current headcanon that Han yeah. totally screwed over Sid and Sid was like, I like you kid, but this is what you get. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're at, at this point in the bad batch we're you know, we're, we're too early for Han to be running out in the galaxy. This, this you and I both know, but I, I love this idea. My head too. I, I, you know, you and I don't need every little, corner of the star wars story covered or connected mm-hmm. but this is one of the ones that i i could get behind uh, because we finally finally gone there like i it just you know the bounty hunter and ord mantel is just one of those star wars things that we've all grown up mm-hmm. with and it hangs over a lot of us and when are we going to get that in kind of official canon and when's it gonna happen i don't even think in the comics i don't think they hit it which means they probably weren't allowed to but someone out there might be able to refresh my my memory uh, in terms of modern canon but it's intriguing and just the fact they were there it's a fun reference and if that's all it is Great. Uh, I'm not expecting Bad Batch season five to have Han and Chewie running into Sid. I think Sid might go through some growth, but I, I'm with you. There's just something about it. It's just too great of a location because you know Han and Chewie shortly after pressing the you know the the go go hyperspace buttons on on the Falcon at the end of Solo. You know along the way they probably stopped to wet the whistle, and this looked like a place where Han felt he could be like thought he could belong. And he learned it pretty quickly. No, no. But he didn't believe it. He didn't accept it. Chewie understood. Yeah. Yeah. I also just think that's, you know, functionally that that Sid is like, yeah, yeah. For for some of the other people who come here, it's a dive bar where I I absolutely Mm -hmm. make money off these fools with my gambling machines. 
Uh, but it's also like it's a clearinghouse for jobs, right? Uh, and yeah. I, I think that there's some galactic smuggler's guide. Uh, I think Maz Kanata probably wrote it. And on that smuggler's guide, uh, you know, in Bounty Hunter's Guide, Sid's is on it. Chalman's is on it. You know, yeah. these these bars that look like nothing from the outside, but you can get work there. You know, yes. I think there's a literal guide uh, that that Han got his grubby hands on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I love that there's something to uh, maybe Chalman's is a little bit more of Han's, you know, home bar. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> <You> yeah. <know? laughs> yeah, this is the one in the other city. Uh, love that. Love that there. Uh, look, I want to get into this real world detail that I know you and I have discussed before, but we're we're highlighting Sid's parlor going into season two with Rio Perlman voicing Sid and her parlor having a staircase down to a sub street <laughs> level bar. How are we feeling about the strong connection to Cheers? Oh, I absolutely love it. I know I've mentioned it before. Cheers is uh, foundational to me. Uh, Mm -hmm. Growing up, I watched it, I think, starting in season two. Uh, Remember the cliffhangers. Uh, Sam Sam left the bar to fly to Europe to stop Diane from marrying Frazier. I remember being excited, and I think my brother missed that episode. It's like, unbelievable things have happened. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, and then it was uh, aired at 10.35 every night through, uh, you know, most of my junior high and high school years. Mm. So, uh, you know, there's some episodes of Cheers to this day. Uh, I mm. sit down and start watching them and I can say every line. Um, yeah, yeah. There was one time when I was desperate, uh, you know, for any Star Wars content anywhere. And there were the episodes where uh, where Cheers competed uh, with Gary's Old Town Tavern. Uh, mm. And they did a whole war- week of the Bar Wars episodes. And TV Guide advertised the week of Bar Wars episodes with like, it was R2-D2, but it had Norm's head. It was kind of freakish, but I was desperate for any Star Wars content. And like, this is great. This is beautiful. Yeah. So to have an actual line drawn between Cheers and Star Wars, absolutely love it. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's just really fun. It just... You know, we, we've we've got uh, Cliff uh, over there at Echo Base, uh, Real Pearlman, <laughs> Carla here. Uh, I just, I just something about it I love, and yeah, and Cheers is foundational for me too. A little bit later because I wasn't allowed to watch it early on, mm. but uh, rediscovered it um, uh, in the nineties uh, as as it was wrapping up and went back. And I, it, it's, a, I put it on Netflix all the time now. I think mm. that's where where you can find it now just watch i watch season one a lot it's just it's great and we could we could do cheer center another time but <laughs> it just it just feels great it's just fun it's such a pop culture thing and rio perlman's such a, a great performer and brings just the right energy almost as if this is what carla ended up doing anyways <laughs> i can see this <laughs> i can see this and 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 star wars has a lot of those little references the clone wars just the whole series had a lot of those little fun little references anytime like indiana jones pops up in clone wars or even andor I think it's great. I think it's fun. It reminds you uh, this part of the spirit of Star Wars is that fun stuff. So it really works for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think there is an element to it of, you know, that that stares down to the bar in the basement gives it this extra cozy vibe, like the lyrics mm-hmm. of Cheers say, you know, taking a break mm-hmm. from all your troubles sure would help a lot. And and I think Sid is making money off of everybody. She's a, you know, a no nonsense, a uh, business trandosian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I think there is a little bit of that heart of gold there. And there is a little bit of like, all right, you loser, you know, you're going to, you're going to lose money somewhere. Come in here and do it where you'll be safe. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just hope if we ever, if you get deep into bad batch and, and Sid's parlor goes away, that the last shot is, is Sid saying, uh, you know, we're closed to a patron knocking on the door. That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm the luckiest Trandosian ever. Yeah. 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 Indeed. So, Hey, look, you know, part of the, vibe of a cheers that everyone loved was the characters there the regulars here comes the regulars paul westerberg once said well catch and bolo are two of the parlors regulars i might argue they might be the only <laughs> regulars if we really know <laughs> um what do they add to the ambience of sid's parlor they're pretty funny man i i, I wanted to look up a lot of the beats because there are a lot of like good jokes with them uh in, mm-hmm. in there but i think it's you know it's catches the weak way and bolo is the authorian and they, mm-hmm. they just got this classic comedy of duo vibe. Definitely the the bar flies like Cliff and Norm, but there's a little bit of a Laurel and Hardy thing too of like they're mm-hmm. kind of the the spectators. You know, I think I like them as they're they're the kind of losers, hard on their luck. They're always always in there gambling. I don't think it's perhaps making their lives much better. No, no. Uh. <laughs> but they're the kind of these spectator characters. And, and that's really interesting because so many of our characters in Star Wars can they're the the heroes, the adventurers, the villains, the people who are who are choosing to go out in the galaxy and kind of make a mess, uh, make some noise, make a difference, right? And having 
Catch and Bolo kind of never leave that basement. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Bad Batch keep returning from these big, life changing, <laughs> dangerous adventures. And Catch and Bolo have gone through nothing since yeah. they've been gone. It it gives it this great contrast, you know? Yeah. 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 No, there's some, you know, when you look at a lot of things Bad Batch is, is trying to accomplish and has accomplished in, in season one, uh, you know, Camino and big, uh, you know, the empires reaching out over the galaxy, all those things that you and, lo- you and I and so many people love diving into. And then the big found family and all the stuff. Then you got these two knuckleheads and I just love them. I just love that they exist in Star Wars. Uh, we, we've we spent some time with some regulars and other bars. Uh, I really think uh, some of the stuff on Star Wars Resistance is, is great for Star Wars regulars, bar regulars. Uh, at on Z's bar. Yeah, just something about them. They just they just really drive home the point of, of what this is. It's a dive bar in Star Wars. And man, what a tradition. And uh they're they're downright funny. And and that's always a part of Star Wars you and I value, as as others do too. Yeah, we got to, we got Big Al who's always at Aunt Z's Tavern mm. in uh, Resistance. And I would love to see just as an Easter egg a younger version of Big Al just uh <laughs> throwing back some Uda Gouda yes. <laughs> at Sid's parlor. That would be great. Yeah, let's let's connect all the bar universes. <laughs> absolutely do it. Let's absolutely do it. Maybe Elon Sleeves Begano can pass through and just try to, you know, tell everyone don't don't have death sticks. Please don't have death sticks. He's handing out pamphlets. He's just an absolute activist now. <laughs> uh we've got to, as always, kind of answer this along the journey here, the discussion, but we we have to end the first part of our show here with uh, what is the magic of Sid's parlor? What does it bring to the Star Wars saga? You know, I think for me it is that idea that it is both a, a, a rough and tumble place and also cozy. And that's kind of the magic of a dive that yeah. it's a rough place with a heart of gold. And we know that that Sid is pretty mercenary, but she's got wisdom. She's got a heart of gold. She doesn't let people in who she thinks is going to bring the wrong kind of trouble. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, the, the magic is that it, it captures that, that real world thing of a rough place with a heart of gold providing refuge in a dark time. Yeah. <clears throat> Big themes at play there definitely connects to what's going on in this show. What's going on into star Wars across many uh, pieces of content and media and stories. So I'm with you on that there. And and it's just, again, I talk about this tradition of bars. You and I always joke about it. I think 90% of databank brawl fights were set in Star Wars bars. Uh, <laughs> we might have to return just to see what happens. Uh, and I don't think Ketch and Bolo are involved. I think they're just cheering it on and taking side bets. A lot going on there. And that's that's the magic. It's the simple magic. It's the big themes. It's the location. And the fact that, you know, you could almost get, you almost expect a bar to show up in Star Wars. And then when one does and it just adds something completely new while also fitting in so well with the others that have come before it, I don't know. It just gets excited. You know, I don't go to a ton of bars. It definitely didn't do back in my day, but as a stand-up comic, definitely performed in a lot, definitely hung out in some of these bad ones, definitely walked into them. And I'm always searching for that heart of gold in the bar. It's always something that's a, you know, who's here that brings the warmth. Uh, who's here not just working through troubles and who's here not just getting bounties in the galaxy. Let's mm-hmm. find them find them so yeah it fits quite well into the star wars saga sid's parlor yeah yeah it makes me uh makes me long for spending a little bit more time uh just hanging out in bars there's a place in uh, minneapolis called the cc club that's got a little it's it's not uh, underground but it's got a little uh sid's parlor vibe so i'll, I'll think of the cc club as the sid sid club from now on there you go <laughs> we are gonna take a quick break here on databank dive when we come back we're gonna make it personal and talk more about Sid's Bar. Let's stick around for more Force Center. Welcome back. I'm Ken Absack. That's Joseph Scrimshaw here in the virtual studio. Uh, we are having our uh, fun talking about Sid's Parlor here on Databank Dive. So, Joseph, we're going to make it personal. We're going to really, really connect. Uh, some of it might be uh, our own headcanon. If we are in the Star Wars galaxy, some might be real world conversations and questions here. But if we were in Sid's parlor, we have a list here. I'm sure there could be more. But what would uh, our drinks of choice be in Sid's parlor? <laughs> well, there's not a lot to go on because uh, a lot of a lot a lot of them are not fleshed out as what is the actual alcohol taste like, what's going on with it. Uh, but I came up with one that's I'm definitely not going to drink, and, and one I'm most curious about. Uh, I'm not going to drink Uda Gouda. Uh, mm. because the label, it contains a picture of a blue fist. 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. There's no positive connotation in that. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. want to be uh, drinking alcohol that makes me feel like I'm being punched by a large alien. Not yeah. for me. Uh, maybe a little bit counterintuitive, but the one that I'm most intrigued by is the thermal detonator uh, because mm-hmm. it comes in a bottle shaped like an actual thermal detonator, uh, yeah. which... Hey, they have those Coke bottles and I think Sprite bottles at Galaxy's Edge that are shaped like a thermal detonator. Uh, There's a real cheap liquor that I see every time I go to Ventura for some reason uh, in the stores there. I think it's called Balls with a Z, B-A-L-L-Z, kind of shaped like a thermal detonator. But I got to think that thermal detonators like come in lots of different flavors and they're basically the Mad Dog 2020 of the Star Wars Galaxy. So that's where I'm going. Love that. Love that. That's a great answer here. Yeah, I think I would be drawn to wine in the reserve, but then quickly realize, one, it's probably too expensive because that that word reserve just kind of <laughs> bumps up the prices. It's top shelf. And I'll work my way down to something cheaper and more simple. So I think you, you went to thermal detonator. I like reactor coolant. Mm. Number one, it almost reminds me of cactus cooler, which is not the, re- <laughs> not, the not maybe the thing you want to have uh, in your brain there. But um I love it. Yeah, simple bottle. I'm looking at the the picture of it too. It's a large rectangular yellow bottle with a light blue label of a ringed planet, which kind of reminds me of the old space Lego designs on the astronaut <laughs> minifigs. So that kind of is why I'm drawn into that one there. And I don't know, there's something, uh, if I'm out and about in the galaxy and things are getting hot, I want to cool down and reactor cool. It seems like the drink that would do that. So that would be my choice. Oh, yeah. No, I like that. I like that. That that reactor coolant might be some sort of like mixed punch with a a hard drink and some exotic, you know, a Jogan fruit mixed with (laughs) some sort of Corellian whiskey. Yeah. Like last night, I I, I smashed up a tangerine and put it into my whiskey. A little Mm. tangerine whiskey to whiskey. I don't know what you call it. It was great. It was great. Uh, And uh, all right. So going to the real world here. we have Batu Galaxy's Edge. That's a lot of times we'll replace uh, play some of the merchant stars. But what would be the best kind of merch to honor Sid's parlor? Uh, this is perhaps my action figure by it, but a full play set. Vintage three and three quarter. <laughs> yes. Comes with the exclusive fetch and bolo uh, and Sid. Uh, individual booze bottles that you can pick up and place in their hand. Uh mm-hmm. all you know, actual uh, light up uh gambling machines, full play set. Absolutely. I would love that. I would love that in Lego form as well. But I definitely, you know, I, I, I've i kind of cut back on my Star Wars shirt purchases, but I would love a Sid's parlor, just like a, a Cheers shirt. Um, oh. it's, yeah, I'm a big fan of it's always sunny in Philadelphia. You can get a Patty's Pub shirt if you want. Uh, fictitious, uh, you know, uh, locations, uh, restaurants, bars, otherwise. I do kind of like that kind of stuff. So let's do a T-shirt of Sid's parlor. I am so all in on that. I'm really enjoying wearing uh, T-shirts that are a thing that I love. And then if somebody else really uh, loves a thing, they might recognize it. But it doesn't just say like Star Wars or Batman. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I would love a Sid shirt. Love that. Love that one. Final question here. And now, uh, you know, current living situations, be damned. Uh, You know, you move into a, a house where you got an extra room. All right. Would you convert part of your house into a Star Wars cantina? Just have one of those, like, they'd feature you on, like, Star Wars YouTube. Like, we're going to Joseph Scrumshaw's house. And he's turned his part of his house into an actual Star Wars cantina. Would you want to do that? Would you want to get lost in Sid's parlor every day? Oh, yes. I think uh, my wife and I have a long-standing plan. If we lived in a place uh, large enough, we were so lucky that we would make a combination uh, bar library. Like, big, mm. old, wooden uh, bookshelves f- absolutely full of books and then you, you press a secret book and it opens up and there's your bar so gotta build that first but if I had that one and it was now time for second bar <laughs> there you go in the basement for sure there would be a cantina themed bar in, in gaming room yeah I I, I would love that I don't I, I gotta say I don't know if I my first choice might not be Sid's and, I, and first choice wouldn't be Shalman's uh, it just might be some kind of um, I don't know the Outlander club especially how i love playing video games playing Fortnite in there might be great oh that'd be that'd be awesome there but uh the, the point is i i you know dream circumstance with a you know spare room a true spare room uh just having an actual star wars uh room converted into something would be cool but i would want it to be a bar so sid's parlor is high on the list i wouldn't want to be a you know star destroyers uh 
uh, command deck. I wouldn't want to be echo base or, you know, anything like that. I, I think it would need to be a bar. Uh, the, 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 uh, Ford Ipso and Vandor might be the, my first choice from being honest, but uh, Sid's Parlor is up there mostly because I would want to find a way to have catch and bolo there in real life. <laughs> I love this idea that you could just design kind of your own new Star Wars bar, right? That, mm-hmm, that takes mm-hmm. the aesthetics of many of them and combines them, but it is your own space. And then, you know, you could Star Wars a your name and it could be like Ox Ox Next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zock the cans. Yeah. 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 Like mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, but there we go. Uh, you know, and, and, and um, maybe, uh, maybe eventually we'll get some more bars added into uh, Star Wars land. Maybe there'll be some uh, other choices there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, Olga's Cantina needs some competition. So I yeah. hope Sid opens one up on uh, Black Spire Outpost. Well, yeah, that's the thing. With that wait list over there, the Olga's Cantina, you're going to need another option soon. So maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Mm-hmm. All right, we are uh, almost done here on Databank Dive. As we always do, we're going to rate the wild, weird, and wondrous factor of Sid's Parlor. Our rating is based on one of the original Star Wars weirdos, Lobot. Uh, we might, might have to find the place equivalent of that there. Location. <laughs> uh, so out of 10 Lobot heads, Joseph, one being the least, 10 being the most, how many Lobot heads do you give Sid's Parlor? I'm going 6.5 out of 10. I love it, but it's pretty tied to real world. It, it's it's a, a pretty direct kind of one-to-one of it's this uh, CD parlor, and it's got the gaming uh, machines uh, in the hollows, but that's, yeah, it's uh, pull tabs and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and football on in the background. And uh, yeah, it's a lizard lady, uh, but it's a cranky, world weary, world wise woman with the heart of gold. Uh, like, how, how many bars uh, got a yeah. Sid uh, running them? Plenty, plenty. That's a great rating. Uh, it's, it's sometimes we, you, we just kind of look at uh, maybe even our, our titles of the episode might be how, how weird it is or, or how wild it is. Uh, you know, this is uh, you really do factor all three of the the W's we got here into the rating, yeah. and, and as far as wild, I mean it's pretty wild just what goes on there. So I would rate it high for that. Then weird, it's not weird at all. It's so normal. I grew up with it, <laughs> watching it on TV in the eighties and nineties. So no, it's not weird at all. And I've been to these spots, uh, but wondrous. Oh, there's so much wonder going on since parlor, like all the things she's got going on in the back room, her collection, oh, yeah. her pearls, like where did she get those? What's going on? Catch and bolo. So much things there. I, I really, truly looking forward to spend more time in Sid's parlor. So I'm going to, I'm going to be right there with you. I'm going to rate it a six uh, right there in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. That 0.5 is for the back room, which we didn't talk about a lot, but there's some great stuff going on in that back room. Absolutely. Well, Bad Batch season two is upon us and Sid's parlor will be uh, there. I'm sure. So we're going to spend some more time there. What is your rating? Let us know. You can find us on Twitter at Force Center Pod. From there, you can link to all the other things uh, we have for you, Instagram, YouTube, and more. Uh, for me, you can follow me at Cadnapsock. Go to my website, cadnapsock.com. If you like music, I have a show called Pop Rock and Radio on Mixcloud. It's kind of like the jukebox in the corner of the CD bar. You know, you just put in the money and let it play. Joseph, where can they find and follow you? Yeah, you can find me on all the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw is my handle pretty much everywhere. And you can head on over to YouTube and search for Joseph Scrimshaw uh, to see some comedy videos, short films, and more stuff coming soon. Love it, love it. That is it for Databank Dive. Go out and have some, uh, you know, what do they call it? Wicked Womp Rats on us. See you next time. <laughs>